Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, New Life of Albany, Georgia. I hope you're doing great in Jesus. Just got this in, the Baylor Annotated Study Bible. I've wanted it for a, a while, and it's been on the hit list, uh, the money list. You know how that is. And so I was able to get this. CBD finally opened back up. Christian book distributors were thankful for that. And so this is just what it says. Baylor uh, Annotated Study Bible, Baylor University. A Baptist, I, I want to say it's Southern Baptist, I'm not sure. It's considered liberal, and that's just in those designations of people, you know, for communicative purposes, whether something's conservative, liberal, or something like that. So it's New Revised Standard Version. I was reading through it the other day. I didn't really know who Bellinger or Todd Steele was. Um, has the Apocrypha. I'm just going to read the flyleaf here. Timeless, empowering, inspired, true. The Holy Bible is the Word of God for the people of God whose task it is to bear witness to the work of God in the world. For a generation, this book has served to define the identity of the church and shape its mission. Taken together, the Old and New Testaments tell the story of a God who creates, calls, and covenants with people, a God who makes all things new. At the heart of this story is the person of Christ, the one in, in through whom Christians read all scripture. So, I mean, that's good. And I will tell you, reading through the notes, that, you know, you have different expectations for things. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to guess, being from Baylor, it's going to be somewhat liberal. Uh, 2019 Baylor University Press, Waco, Texas. Um, I was a little surprised at some of the conservatism. Now, it's not going to be a strict biblically literalist like I am. It's going to have what, you know, in, in my estimation would be liberal, but what in evangelical circles goes today as uh, evangelical, new evangelical, you know, maybe kind of like your John Walton wing of that. I did want to show you what it looks like, too, without the... Uh, cover. I do like the deep green cover, and it's not a slick card back. It's kind of like a corrugated, kind of like you see on um, textbooks, college textbooks. So I'm assuming this is probably going to be a college textbook. And so I don't know all the permutations it comes in currently. I was reading if I can refine this, um, that it comes in hardback and then a couple of other things. Yeah, leather look green and gold, leather look chestnut brown. This is also printed in the United States of America. Um, who published this? Do, 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 do. Oh, Baylor University Press. I've already mentioned that. I was just looking. Um, Interior design and typeset by Tyndale Publishers and Scribe Incorporated. So that's kind of cool. The contents and arrangement of the BASB. Also has the Apocrypha. I may have mentioned that. Um, I did want to read this. It's part of the editor's preface. I'm not going to go through the entire editor's preface because it is long. And it's done by Bellinger and Steele, January of 2019. Okay, so the contents and arrangement of the BASB. All versions of the BASB contain the 39 books comprising the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, following the arrangement and contents of Protestant Bibles and the 27 documents constituting the New Testament. Student versions of the BSB also include 17 apocryphal deuterocanical books. The latter works, though not deemed canonical and thereby authoritative for most Protestant churches, are inherently valuable for historical reasons. As such, for students and other interested readers, we have retained the references to apocryphal books in the NRSV concordance located in the back of this Bible. The contents of the Old Testament of the BSB mirror those of the Jewish scriptures. However, unlike the Hebrew Bible, which has a tripartite arrangement, Torah, Prophets, Writings, and is comprised of 24 books, counting the book of the Minor Prophets as one book and reparting, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and Ezra and Nehemiah, single books respectively, the BSB follows the arrangement most commonly employed by Protestant Bibles in the English-speaking world since the 17th century. It's got a preface to the NRSV. I've done a review on the NRSV, what that is. And it would do things like, I was just reading like CE, like Common Era, and BCE, Before the Common Era. You know, I still do AD, BC, Anno Domini, 
uh, BC before Christ kind of thing. Um, and I guess you could do CE Christian era, BCE before Christian era, something like that. It does look like it's glued to me just because I'm looking at glue and it doesn't have decorative headbands or tail bands. Here's some more of the contributors, a whole ton. And they're not listed like, you know, a lot of times they're in like lists. These are almost like a book kind of thing. So we're just gonna try to go stem to stern, kind of give you uh, not only the format and the layout, but maybe read some things in here and you can maybe through that at least see some theological direction. I did want to say, oh, and it looks like, it looks like Holman Bible Maps. I'm not sure if it is. But uh, it's 1,992 pages total before the maps. And so introduction to Genesis. And you'll notice the introductions. This is not really in what I would call a popular study Bible format, like your ESV study Bible, your CSB study Bible, even your open Bible, new open Bible, those type things, MacArthur, Swindoll, Evans. But you can tell it's just kind of more academic. I mean, it's just there, if you know what I'm saying. It's not a lot of bells and whistles and those type things. And so um, it's going to have the traditional no references commentary at the bottom. That's kind of, I'm just turning to another page, let you see like in Judges, just a random to let you see that it does have commentary pretty ubiquitous throughout. Pretty much all around. And so I'm going to go back to Genesis and read a little bit in the uh, introduction to Genesis and maybe give us just a little bit of a feel for what it is. Okay, the book of Genesis narrates uh, two God-willed beginnings for what constitutes the heart of biblical faith. Genesis is an act of ongoing, daring, faithful imagination. It is imagination because it gathers disparate materials together and shapes them into an utterly new articulation. It is faithful because for all of its disparate material, it amounts to a witness to Yahweh, the God of Israel, who is creator of heaven and earth. It is daring because it links the God a given wonder of the world to the God-given chosenness of Israel in a way which creation and history were never before connected. It is ongoing because the book is a continuing dynamic process in which many generations of traditionalists were able to have a participating voice. The first narration of God-willed beginning is the succinct history of the world that's presented in Genesis 1 through 11. The narrative intends to be neither scientifically nor historically plausible. It is rather an act of artistic construal whereby the origin and nature and ongoing life of the world is linked to the creator. And I notice things like creators, not capitalized, stuff like that. In order to generate this narrative, the traditionalists of ancient Israel utilized many already extant materials from cultures older than Israel. Israel, however, in its borrowing of such material, shaped, interpreted, and organized them in ways which made them into peculiar Israelite narrative that is attested to the God of Israel. At the outset, two accounts of creation bear witness to two different, excuse me, to different dimensions of the truth of created reality. The presentation of two such narratives that are not reconciled to each other indicates from the outset that Israel's imaginative material is no single absolute statement. See, and of course, I would disagree with all that. That's all totally liberal and uh, pretty amazing. We're going to see what print size it is. I did want to mention, too, it does have really good in-text paragraph headers. So it's going to look like it's going to be about 10 point print. Okay, it's maybe not 10 point. Let's see nine. Maybe nine and a half. Excellent print. The uh, notes look slightly smaller than that. Yeah, it looks more eight, eight and a half ish. So it may be like nine, nine and a half in the text, eight, eight and a half in the notes. But uh, so another account of creations, one of the headers, stuff like that, creation of humanity. 
Let's see what it says here. The plural of let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness likely references God speaking in the presence of other divine beings in the heavenly court. It gives references to that. Image and likeness probably hearken to ancient Near Eastern tradition in which the king represents the embodiment of God on earth. See again, like I would just disagree with all that, obviously. And... Uh, I'd, and it's pretty clear that they're not in favor of mosaic authorship either. The introduction to Isaiah, a traditional Jewish criticism, I just want to read this to us too, has seen the book as a unity since the time of Ben Sira 200 BC, the hymn in honor of our ancestors, Sirach 44 1. See, and stuff like that, that's good information. And has seen Isaiah's vision of the last things as well, interim events, as trustworthy. While critics from Jerome, who called the book a gospel, to Northrop Fry, have also tended to regard the book as a remarkably unified composition, despite its multiple genres, oracles, visions, lyrical poems, prayers of Thanksgiving historical narrative. Modern biblical crit critics have emphasized its disjunctions and fragmentation. Isaiah the prophet, probably born about 765 BCE, is generally taken to be personally responsible for the text from the prologue through 3510. This is what I was reading and preparing for this. Immediately following is the narrative about King Hezekiah. Jewish tradition regards Isaiah as having been martyred by King Manasseh around 700. If so, chapters 36 to 39 would be the work of someone who saw the Hezekiah narrative as fitting a coda to the patterned oracles, visions, and poets preceding it. 40 through 55, evidently a unit, are generally known as the Book of Israel's Consolation and seem likewise to come to a conclusion 55, 11 through 13. The balance of the book, sometimes referred to as the third Isaiah, has poems, on and on and so forth. So, as you can kind of see, I mean, obviously I would have vast disagreements with this. When I had stated at the outset some conservatism, I was like, well, at least they're saying there was really an Isaiah that he did live 765 BC, that he did have interactions with Hezekiah, um, talked about his martyrdom under Manasseh, which is speculation. Hebrews 11 says somebody got sawn asunder, but that's just kind of Jewish speculation. Um, and maybe historical tradition as well. But again, and so to me, this is in the same genre as the... Uh, like the NRSV Study Bible, the uh, Oxford Annotated Bible, the Annotated Reference, RSV, NRSV. And, you know, it's probably good for colleges, international uh, theological seminary and all this, but it, it would not be like I couldn't fathom trying to get up and preach the word from this because really there's almost no word left. Who's that guy from Harvard and Westminster that was doing Peter Inns, the um, incarnated word kind of theory? And that's, that's what I get. I'm thinking of Peter Inns when I'm reading so much of this because I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of what he believes. So that's the reason we kind of fight hard to keep that out of Pentecost. So, now at the back, there's really no study helps other than the maps. And I was trying to see if it said how many maps there are. I don't see how many maps there are. Very nice maps, though. We'll measure this. I used to have Sister Fran and Brother Mallory zoom in when we had measured this. I just started measuring it. I just didn't think people needed really. As long as I gave the dimensions, they didn't need to care. And I'd, I'd do a comparison of the dimensions. But let's just see here how big this thing is. I can tell you it's, it's a nice size study Bible. Yeah, you know, like it's 9.3 inches by 6.1 inches. Very little yet. And probably 2.2 inches thick, which seems to be thick. For some reason, this just doesn't feel that thick. Would be fascinating to get in like a leather soft. Now, it says it's got an NRSV concordance. Yeah, okay, here it is. My bad. It put the Apocrypha. This is something I skipped looking through this. I can't believe I did that. Okay, so here, let me just show you some of this. Timeline. I hope nobody logged off. They probably did before we got to this part. 
I was like, it said it had a concordance. I couldn't find the concordance. The apocrypha was in the back. But uh, again, that's just totally my bad. So the timeline pretty goes on like Second Peter 110 to 120 CE, which I would say that's not uh, true. A BSB glossary, BASB uh, glossary, which I think BASB is kind of cool. You know, you have like the NASB, but BASB abbreviation for the Baylor Annotated Study Bible. Like the Premier Study Bible, we call it PSB all the time. I'd recommend you get one of those. <laughs> and uh, so this has, yeah, the glossary, obviously. And here's the concordance. And I'm just going to tell you, I like the concordance because it's readable, it's spaced out well. So often when I get to Bible concordances, it's almost like people said, oh, by the way, we probably need to get a concordance in there and it's very difficult this one actually has some connotation of readability and usability never ceases to amaze me sometimes large print bibles have absolutely terrible concordances let's see what else it's got in here timeline okay and there's the apocrypha so that's how i missed that let's see how big this concordance is if we can 1735, 1735, 2, 1637. So about 98 pages. I just like this glossary. I just saw in a great term, Toledot, a Hebrew term meaning generations, the designation for the ancestry formula recurring in Genesis that traced the genealogy of the various nations. Because I became acquainted recently with the Toledot Yasu. I say recently, a few years ago which is kind of what Jewish writers say about Jesus kind of thing. And so, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> so, but God bless, but we love the Jewish people. So God bless you. Uh, depends on your theological viewpoint. Uh, I like sometimes to read books like this because I get nuggets I don't get other places, but obviously eat the foods, put out the sticks. God bless you. Baylor Annotated Study Bible.